Hello YouTube, it's Movie Gamer, and this is the How to Draw Video Game Characters tutorial. Today I'm going to be drawing Team Chaotix from Sonic Heroes. It was a game that came out on Xbox, and this was one of the cooler teams in my opinion. At first was Team Dark, of course, Shadow, Woot. And this is actually the first drawing uh, of the How to Draw Video Game Characters tutorial series that I am doing since I've moved to Asbury. I edited one that I had done the summer before I moved. But this is the first one I'm doing actually here. So, thank you guys for sticking with me to this point. And if you're just now tuning in, thank you for clicking on this video. Now, without further ado, let the drawing begin. And this is what I'm going to be drawing right here. Well, I mean, I'll be drawing on this thing, but I mean, that's what... Alright, so, I'm going to start this drawing off with a 2H pencil. This is a very light... Uh, drawing pencil. I'm just going to put in a sketch to figure out where I want my characters to be, how I want them to be posed. Um, I'm not quite sure of that yet. So I will brainstorm, sketch around a bit, and we'll see what comes out. So I know I want Vector to be the sort of backgroundish character, not because he's less important, but because he's so big. Um, he needs to make, we need to make sure that he has enough room to be himself, you know. Vector's just one of those loud types. <laughs> you just start out with a general shape for the head. Um, you don't have to do anything specific when you're sketching. Really what you want to do is you want to leave it as light as you possibly can. Vector almost has a snake-like body um, without his arms. The tail's just gonna come back like that. His legs really start way up on his body. It might look bad now, but I'm, I'm serious. It will get better. Um, I definitely want Charmy to be sort of buzzing around, floating up in the air. She's going to be up here. I'm not sure what he's going to be doing yet, but he has a really tiny body. His head is bigger than his body. Makes you wonder if he has a large brain. But sometimes with Charmy, it doesn't seem like that. And then the character that everybody loves... SBO. <laughs> he's like a ninja hedgehog, but he's not a hedgehog. He's a chameleon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I forgot for a second. See, I've, I've had a lot more practice drawing um, SBO than I have most of the other Sonic characters. Really, the character that should give me the most difficulty is Vector. Um, but, I mean, it's good to draw those characters that you're not so good at drawing because it makes you get better at drawing them. All right, so I've got my sketch pretty much the way I want it. Now we're going to go in with a lead pencil and start detailing our characters. I'm going to first focus all my attention on Vector because he is the one I'm most worried about, um, but he is also in the foreground. So let's get him right first. Now I like to first uh, focus my attention on the face for whatever character I'm drawing because the face is really what makes that character look like themselves. Um, particularly the eyes. Vector's eyes aren't angry per se, but they're kind of serious, I suppose. He's still a really big goofball, but he tries to act cool. We want him looking down at the landscape that I am going to put in later. I'm not sure if it's going to be an ocean yet or something else. I probably think an ocean. And his face is going to be coming up right alongside of his eye. As with any video game character drawing, I recommend having a source image for whatever it is that you're drawing. Um, helps you get a much more detailed picture. If you've ever searched for source images, you know that you'll find basically two types of images. You'll find uh, sort of pictures of the characters drawn by another artist. Um, or you'll find the CGI sort of screenshots of them. And I'm sort of working from a combination of both because I want it to seem sort of realistic, but for this drawing especially, I'm going to be taking on a very artistic feel with it. His face seems to be coming along pretty good. And his head actually comes around back this way. There's another detail from the other one that I think I'll throw in. 
Now Vector always has uh, a pair of headphones on. They're just going to start off with some squares here. We're sort of going into sketching mode here for a second. And then the band of those headphones is going to come around his head. And I'm going to have him be messing with the headphones with his hand on the other side. But typically you don't see them on the other side so much. But we're going to this time, because I said so. In both drawings, Vector's head slash neck sort of protrude a lot farther than you'd think. Vector's a really <laughs> somewhat disproportionate character. Um, I suppose all the Sonic characters are, but he seems more so. He's just big and awkward, but that's what makes him such a funny character. Yeah, he also has a gold chain, but we'll get onto that in due time. First, I want to work on the uh, underbelly of this crocodile. These lines are going to go all the way down and even across his tail back here. You won't see them as much, though. And we'll start in with the lines here. We got one, two, three, four. Let's come in a bit and work on Vector's monstrous hands. He probably has uh, the biggest hands out of any Sonic character. Maybe big might be bigger. Huh. He has very large cuffs for his gloves. They're just about as big, if not bigger, than his hands. So his thumb is going to be on the inside here. Um, so we'll be seeing the pinky, this part here. Um, some of you who have watched my most recent drawing videos might be like, why doesn't he have a side camera? That was cool. Well, um, it's a bit difficult to set up just this today. Um, so I'll just stick with this for a while. <laughs> All you really need is just a camera and a willingness to draw something. If anyone ever tells you it's easy to draw hands, just kind of reach over and gently slap some sense into them. Gently. Um, since we have Vector's hand coming down like that, I want to sort of bring his cuff forward a bit more. He's got a band going across, a gold band, and a buckle on his cuffs. Vector is all into the bling. Top of that comes over on that side, and the rest of buckle comes over like that. Should be a lot beefier of a buckle than I've just made it, but you get the picture. So I definitely know that's what I want his hand to look like, but I've sort of skipped a step. We need to make sure that his arm is actually coming out of his body in the right place. Vector's arms start in these little um, black sockets, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. It's the ball joint in your shoulder. <laughs> Um, they're sort of small in relation to his arm. Just as simple as that. The arm starts out thin and widens as it comes to the hand. So coming back to the other hand, I'm sort of copying uh, <laughs> the other hand directly from the picture I've got. Um, but it's just because I don't know what else to do with the other hand in this picture. I think we're ready for Vector's blang blang, um, his chain. We're gonna make his gold metallic chain now. Let's just start off with a wide shot of that. But as we come along, you'll have the piece that you can see mostly. It'll be flat against his skin, and then the one that will sort of be raised up against his skin. And if you're having trouble figuring out where to position his chain link necklace, it might be good to sort of just draw it, uh, draw a rough outline of where it's going to go to start off with, and then uh, start trying to fill it in. Big as this necklace is, it's not really all that loose on him. Um, it's pretty tight against his neck. So we'll have to show his skin there giving way when we get to it. 
and it's gonna disappear over that direction somewhere. <laughs> uh, we do have one more, two more detail spots on Vector. We have his shoes, um, and then we're going to do the scales on his back. Um, for the front of his shoes here, he doesn't have shoelaces or anything, which makes this really nice and easy to draw. <laughs> And since this shoe in particular is sort of facing um, towards the viewer more within this drawing, we need to make these gray lines sort of expand as they get closer. Okay, so last part on Vector here. Awesome. Did not have nearly as much trouble with this guy as I thought I would. We're going to put on his scales. They're not as visible in the Sonic Heroes rendition but on the very punk style rendition by the artists they're very large and they go all the way down his back um, they do become more spread out for the scales we want them to be sort of rounded they're still going to be um, sharp-ish but they're going to be round and that is basically vector I think I did a pretty good job on him. Um, now we're going to move on to the next character that I have difficulty with. That's Charmy. Hopefully with Charmy being as small as he is, won't give me too much difficulty. Um, I'm going to choose some new source images here. We'll start off with the eyes. Charmy is a very uh, bouncy, happy, busy bee. His eyes are going to be very round, symbolizes childness, childishness but also his eyes are just very round in general. There's a lot of space between um, the brow of his eyes, I guess I'll, if I can call it that, and where his nose is right there. Um, the difference with Charmy is he's always wearing a helmet. I guess that's sort of his um, item that he's known for. And that's going to protrude around like that. On this side, it's sort of going to come out a little bit. We want his eyes looking down as well. We're gonna have Charmy with his mouth open, saying, all right, in a very high-pitched voice, probably more high-pitched than I can do. Um, but that's okay, you don't wanna, you don't wanna hear me high-pitched. Um, on second thought, both antenna are sort of gonna be facing the same way. The antenna start off right at the edge of his helmet brow, <laughs> the red part there. Uh, bring the rest of Charmy's helmet around. It almost looks like Charmy has his own set of headphones. I'm not quite sure that's what they are. It could just be a helmet detail. If someone could let me know what they actually are, that'd be great. But I, th I thought for a moment, if they were headphones, then he's sort of imitating um, Vector. Even Vector seemed to have a more similar style. But he does definitely have goggles coming up on his head. All right, I might have made Charmy's body a lot smaller. Well, then again, his body might be right, but his arms and legs extend a bit farther than I gave them credit for. Let's work on the body first. Charmy wears a very small coat. I guess it's a very small coat for a very small bee. Got the zipper line going here. It stops about midway down his tiny body. Um, on his jacket, he has a very big zipper compared to the rest of it. And then he does have a bit of a detail, some sort of badge. Oh, it's a bee. It's a bee itself. It's funny. Once again, not going into too much detail there. He's got a bit of a collar on his jacket. It's covered up by this uh, pose of him. His legs are going to come out right under the... Um, first black stripe. Sonic characters are notorious for two things. They have, okay, maybe three things. They have big eyes, big hands, and big feet. The soul actually raises up like that. Charmy has very 
boxed feet. Small boxed feet. Sort of fits with his character. But we'll still get to see his little pointy stinger. I'm not making short jokes on purpose. I mean, that's literally he's little. <laughs> Sorry, Charmy fans. And the stinger's right back there. Um, as for his arms, uh, I guess there's another similarity between him and Vector. His arms start off and little black sockets as well. Um, these seem more like, these seem more reasonable because they could be like his sleeves to his jacket. I'm gonna have him raising his hands up. He's like, I can't believe this view. It's so pretty. Except in the charmy voice. He's got black collars for his gloves. It's again, similar to Vector. His aren't very detailed, just a ring basically. And I'll have his hand up here. His hands are pretty big as well. And then the other hand will basically have the same pose. We'll make it a bit smaller since it's more distant. Looks like a pretty good Charmy. Um, last thing on him basically is his wing. Uh, it's just gonna show up right there. We'll do a little bit of uh, comic animating to show that his wing is moving by adding a couple of lines. Just like that. So now we've drawn the gangster Vector and his little henchman Charmy. Now we're going to draw the guy who really makes the team work. Who is like the one who does the heavy lifting, and that's SBO. He's the only reason they get anything done. I am I can assure you of it. SBO is very different from Charmy and Vector. He contrasts to them a lot. He does not have bling, really. He has some detail stuff, but he's a ninja, and he prefers to live simply. I'm pretty sure he has some ninja stars and knives in his in the cuffs of his gloves. How they can turn out to be so big when he pulls them out, I don't know. That's game physics. But nonetheless, he's awesome because he can turn invisible. That's right. So let's come down to the eyes. Um, and we want to make sure that we get his eyes right. They're not that downward. We do have a little bit more emotion out of him than that. But he is probably the most serious character of this group. No, he is the most serious character of that group, I take it back. We'll put in his eye there. Should we have his chameleon horn sticking out there? Um, Espio doesn't appear to have a nose, he just has a horn. Um, I guess that's how chameleons are. And, uh, as I alluded to before, this is not the first time I've drawn Espio. If you want to see another uh, version of him that I drew, throwing a ninja star, uh, you can check out the how to draw VGC playlist at my channel. Um, I guess he might be in the best of how to draw VGC, but he's also from set five? Or you could just search for him, how to draw SBO, video gamer. That'll probably yield the best results. <laughs> oh, anyway, what are we doing? Sort of just quickly drew in his chest there. It's a heart shape. Somehow. SBO is a lot more cautious when it comes to things. Um, in Sonic Heroes, he was reluctant to take on the job that they got from a... Um, walkie-talkie device that came in the mail, and that's probably rightfully so. Not probably. He was right. I just quickly sketched in Espio's hand there. There's not going to be any visible detail on that one, aside from the hand itself. But on the other one, I'll spend a bit more time there on his cuff. Okay. So on to the details of Espio's cuff here. Um, starting off the whole thing, touching his hand, is a 
solid black band. Has some ninja spikes on it, basically. I kind of like the spikier version, as seen in the Sonic Heroes game, so we'll go with that. And then following that, um, on the top here, is actually a... I don't know what it is. I think that's what his, where his ninja blades and stars are kept. It's just going to be a pallet right on the top of it. It's got three blades in it. We'll detail those up later with the ink pen. Then on the top there, it seems to have another blade. And then for the rest of it, it ends with another thinner black band. And the inner material consists of some sort of uh, bandage, I guess. I don't know how else to, to describe it. His shoes are going to have a similar style. We're going to start off with the black band at the top this time. You have the bigger band at the bottom. His shoe cuffs are very, very large. Um, there's spikes on this one too. The bandages have a bit of a pattern. Got one that comes over, one that goes under, one that comes over, and one that goes under. At least in the front of them. I'm not sure what the rest of it looks like. Um, for his shoes, he has a single black band coming across. Um, it's kind of thick. Not too thick. And then the sole of his shoe coming around. Really, his shoes seem more like uh, sandals than anything else. Um, but that foot's going to be on a rock here, so we won't see all of it. He has a series of scales on his back himself. They're small and black. Okay, that's it. Uh, maybe make them a bit longer. A bit spiked here. Okay, that's it. Okay, now the last detail on SBO. Is going to be his chameleon tail. Um, it's it's sort of covered by my drawing, or in this drawing at least. We'll have it come around here. It's gonna circle its way around. Um, it's gonna be a tighter circle than what I've just made it. So we'll have to do some erasing again. It makes a loop around. It ends with a sort of swirl. So now I'm just gonna fine tune my characters a little bit, uh, make sure all my lines are the way I want them, because this next step is going to solidify the lines in such a way that we won't be able to fix any mistakes that we make. So it's good to make sure you're ready. Now comes the next part of this drawing process, the outline inking part. Um, and I'm making a difference because the coloring part's gonna be different today. But for this part, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these sketch pens that I have here. These happen to be Stabler, um, but any type of sketch pens will work. They are basically ink pens with very fine tips. Um, this allows for greater detail work on your outlines. After I finish outlining the characters, I'm going to take a big eraser, such as this, and I'm going to erase all the underlying pencil. The ink won't go away, but the pencil will. It'll really clean up the drawing and make it look a lot better in general, but it'll also prepare us for the next step of the process, which will be the coloring. But to start off, I'm gonna go around all my characters' lines with a .3 size. Yep, that's what this is. And you wanna be very careful while you're doing your outline because you can't fix it with these guys. I mean, sure, there's some erasable pens out there, but if they're erasable, that means they won't stay when you erase everything. So to me, this is the way to do it. So with the eyes, um, Sonic character eyes, these ones at least, basically consist of the outer oval as an iris, an inner oval serve as the people, and they're gonna have a highlight, so we gotta leave room for that. There we go. 
and that'll get cleaned up once we go in with the uh, final line. On SBL's face in particular, I'm going to go down another step and get this detail right here. I don't want it to be so bold as everything else. Um, I'll probably do the same with his mouth here. I'm going to go a step down for Espio's blades. 2.2. Make these a bit more detailed. So with Charmy's antenna, I'm going to come with 0.1 and give it a little bit of that texture I talked about earlier. Basically, we're just going to make these lines um, separating the different stripes jagged. Almost like fur. I don't think bees really have fur per se. And for his wings, I think I'm going to go with a very light uh, 0.5. And then for my background here, I'm only going to outline the part that my characters are interacting with. I'm going to leave all this watery ocean stuff not outlined so I can have more artistic freedom with it. Okay, so I've gotten everything outlined. Now comes the test to see if I really do have everything outlined. I'm going to take, oops, I'm gonna take an eraser and erase all the underlying pencil underneath my drawing. As you can see, things are really cleaning up. I forgot the lines going across um, Vector's body. Give me a second there. And I suppose I'll outline a few of these scale marks on Vector's body. Just as a bit of a detail. Okay, I'm serious guys, this is the last part of the inking process, but I'm going to take a 0.8 now, and I'm going to give one final thick outline uh, to all my characters. This is only going to be on the very outside lines of each character. I'm not going to go over all the lines. And what this is going to do is it's going to further separate my characters from the background. But it's also just going to give it a nice sort of professional look to it. On Charmy's wings, I'm not going to outline them in this thick outline. Because I want them to appear to be thinner on purpose. Alright, so we're finally ready for the last process of this drawing, the coloring process. And today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to introduce you guys to a new uh, colored pencil. Um, these are called ink tents, and though they look like colored pencils, they're actually sort of different. They're... These guys are actually um, ink uh, pencils. So when you color, it goes on dry, but uh, when you put water to it, it actually becomes ink, and it becomes permanent. Um, they have very, very vibrant colors, and I'm excited to use them on this drawing. I've used them before in some of my concentration art, but other than that, not really. So here's how I'm going to start things off. I'm going to do a base coat color, like I normally do. And especially for right now, I'm going to go light, because these pencils pack a punch. I'm going to go ahead and add his color. He's going to be a light green. And I know that their colors don't look quite right just yet, but once again, this is a base coat color, and we're actually going to add some more colors onto this, and layer it, and shade with it uh, to get the characters to look right. And we'll do orange for charming. So now I've got the colors applied very lightly. I'm going to add very lightly some water, a little tiny brush, nothing big. Um, and only a tiny bit of water. You really don't want to overdo it with this stuff. Um, we want to keep this as controlled as we can. Basically, I just start going over it with the water and it activates the 
ink. Once again, we don't want a lot of water because we don't want to overwhelm this paper. Now at the same time, the other thing that uh, any watercolor pencil allows you to do, basically, because of the wetness of this, we could actually put in some patterns and details uh, in the way of texture while we're working in this process. Say for a vector, if we want to make it look more like he has scales, we'll just sort of move the brush across the color in a scale-like pattern. Okay, so I don't really like that color, but it's okay because now that we've gotten some water on there, and just in general, I can take another pencil and color in with it. It has a different effect whenever you put it on wet versus dry, uh, but for the rest of Vector, we'll add it on dry real quick. Uh, coming back in uh, watering, I'm gonna go on to Charmy's color now. And we're not gonna do his a certain way necessarily. We want his to be smooth, like uh, SBO skin. So now before I continue, I'm actually going to wait a little bit for the parts that I've made wet to dry, um, and then I'll go through and apply my next layer of color. And I think SBO is basically dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the yellow of his horn. And basically, just carry on with this process, making sure you don't blur everything too much. <laughs> Put on your base coat, add some water, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to break out some of the Prismacolor color pencils, um, and I'm going to start getting on to the shading process of this drawing. I'm going to start off with my character's eyes first, just to get some life into them. SBO's eyes are going to be yellow. He's the ninja. The rhino ninja? He's not a rhino, he's a chameleon, sir. He has a horn on his nose. Yes. Chameleons have horns. I'm gonna get a little bit more highlight in there. That's good. And Charmy's eyes are going to be orange. Vector's eyes are gonna be red. Now I'm going to start in with the part that's really gonna make the characters pop off the page, and that's the shading. Um, I sort of alluded to it earlier, but the light's gonna be back here somewhere. Uh, sort of lower, so it's going to go up like this. All the shadows are going to be on this side of their body. Bodies. And I'm using Prismacolor for this, because the cool thing about Prismacolor is because of how waxy they are, uh, you can actually just take your finger, after you've gone over it a little bit, and you can blend slash blur it like you would a normal uh, graphite pencil gives it a really smooth look I think it's especially interesting when used over the ink tents just kind of gives you a very layered effect and we're going to carry on this uh, technique all the way across the skin of SPO it's good to have a test page to see what those different colors look like. This color actually doesn't look too different from what I just had. Oh, but I didn't use this one. Okay. Just to give it a little bit more depth. Coming in with another color. And the more uh, different colors you have, the more Prismacolor layers you have, the more rich it's going to turn out. Now, another interesting thing with Prismacolor is the white colored pencil is actually capable of going over whatever colors you've already set down. You can get a really interesting highlight by doing that. For Charmy's antenna, we're even gonna do shading on that. 
we gotta be careful because we have black and yellow next to each other. Even though Prisma colors are not necessarily erasable, you can still erase them. Nothing says you can't. And now we're on our last character, Vector. He's going to have a good degree of shading himself. Uh, just under Vector's head, you want to make a shadow. Just by adding in a little bit of a darker color. And on Vector's light green parts, I'm going to take the white and make an additive highlight. Now all that's left is the background. I'm going to color it in about the same way I did my characters. I'm not really going to show most of this process because it's not the focus, but I will show the um, result for you guys. I want you guys to be creative, come up with your own poses and backgrounds, and just try new things. Most of all, have fun when you're doing this. Because if you don't, you're going to be bored for a very long time. So now I'm going to get rid of my placeholder for the ocean, the pencil lines that I left there. And I'm not going to have any defined lines for this. I'm going to create my ocean all with just color and highlights and stuff like that. It'll make it less defined, um, but it will also make it more chaotic and yet, I think, more artistic. It'll work. Just, just trust me on this. And here is my finished drawing of Team Chaotix. Whoosh. This is basically my first time uh, drawing Vector or Charmy. I think I might have tried to draw them before, but it didn't turn out so good. Unfortunately, the paper did warp a little bit uh, because of the water. It's not quite watercolor paper, but that's kind of to be expected. That would happen even with watercolor paper. I really like how this turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you want to see the Inktense color pencils used again for the rest of set 8. I'm going to be using some different mediums for every drawing. In fact, I'm going to tell you guys what the next few drawings are going to be about. The next character I'm going to be drawing is Ty the Tasmanian Tiger from Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. I think I remember playing his game. Um, it was pretty interesting and the character himself looks pretty cool. Then after that, I'll be drawing Kyurem from Pokemon Black and White 2. And then to wrap up set 8, I'm going to be drawing Mario Saving Peach. Who would have guessed it? So once again, thank you guys for watching this video. You should subscribe if you like this drawing. That way you can see the next few drawings that are going to come up. And if there's a character that I haven't drawn before, there probably are, there's a lot of video game characters. If there's a character that you like that I haven't drawn yet, you can send me a request. Um, I think they got rid of messages, unfortunately. So you'll have to email me it. And you can email it to vgdrawingcontest at gmail.com. I believe that's what it is. If not, that it'll appear on screen. Just send me an email, and that's how I'm going to be taking requests from now on, just to let you guys know. Um, thank you, and have have nice day. Very nice day for you, and you, and you, and you.